to welcome you all. Thank you for being here. Thank you Noah, for being here. Uh, the research and workshops are organized by the last semester students of the Facultad de Ciencias de la Comunicación from the Universidad Autónoma de San Luis Potosí, and it's a space for expression and creativity freedom in an audiovisual format. That's why we are doing this talk with uh, filmmakers around the world. Today from Edinburgh, Scotland, we have with us Noe Mendel. Thanks for being here with us today, Noe. Uh, she is a research professor, professor at the University of Edinburgh and she has uh, produced many, many uh, documentaries, um, basically, and things in TV from uh, in Scotland. But now I will let her talk about herself about her work herself and um, about everything she has to say to us today. Thank you, Noe. Thank you, Raquel, for asking me to do this. It's a great opportunity for me to talk about what we are doing uh, in Scotland and what we are doing through Scottish Documentary Institute. Um, now, the reason why I want to talk about Scottish Documentary Institute, it's because I feel it's our experience in Scotland is very relevant to many other countries where documentary uh, industries, the documentary community is developing. So that's why I, uh, I, I love talking about Scottish Documentary Institute. But just before I get there, I'm going to say a few words about myself. I uh, actually fell into filmmaking at a very early age. Um, I was barely 18. Uh, I was at university in, uh, uh, in England. And uh, a friend of mine uh, was running a course about filmmaking and basically needed numbers to make up kind of, you know, the workshop and insisted, literally forced me to kind of, you know, to sign up for that workshop. And I loved cinema, I always have, kind of, you know, but the idea of getting technical never really appealed to me. So I reluctantly, because he was a friend, I said, okay, I'll come along and I'll be your token woman <laughs> and I'll join in. And uh, I did, and I completely fell in love with filmmaking. It com transformed my life, it transformed everything. Um, and immediately I couldn't think about doing anything else than become a filmmaker. So at the time I was studying anthropology, um, which uh, again, there is quite a, a strong element of uh, filmmaking within anthropology. Um, but Still, at the time, that's not what I was thinking about. But then when I got involved in this filmmaking workshop, I thought, wow, I could maybe at one stage combine the two. But before I did that, I very much got involved in fiction uh, because that was the easiest way to, to learn filmmaking. But also it made sense in terms of, you know, writing my own stories, starting kind of, you know, uh, developing camera work, working with actors, etc. So for a few years, I went on doing different workshops uh, whenever they appeared and started making my own films. And then I uh, realized that uh, uh, it was actually really hard to be a filmmaker in the UK at the time because you had a trade union who made uh, being a, a filmmaker something very exceptional, something that uh, was a privilege rather than uh, uh, being inclusive. And that privilege was very much associated with people coming from uh, Cambridge University, Oxford University, uh, and a few people going into the National Film School in London. Uh, but you only had about five people admitted every year and not so many women, I realized. Um, so I started thinking about the strategy of being a filmmaker in a very different way. I thought, right, whenever I'm going to learn something about filmmaking, I'm going to teach it in order to spread it around. So we break with this kind of privilege that somehow five people 
in the UK gets trained in, uh, in filmmaking. So slowly I started teaching <laughs> as opposed to, I was making films and teaching at the same time. And of course I became kind of a campaigner, kind of, you know, uh, a, an activist that filmmaking should be about uh, inclusion and bringing different voices uh, beyond the white male middle class of uh, the British society. So I got involved in, uh, in a film uh, movement and, uh, uh, and it was very lucky because it came at a time when uh, a broadcaster called Channel 4 was trying to, uh, to be set up. And the irony of history, and this is why I'm telling you this story, it's actually a very right-wing government called Maggie Thatcher uh, who allowed uh, the formation of this new channel in order to promote uh, different filmmakers to come on board. And basically her idea was to break up kind of the trade union for filmmakers. And it's really strange that left-wing filmmakers like myself, feminists like myself, uh, black people getting involved in filmmaking, in a way, managed to get into filmmaking thanks to a right-wing government. It doesn't make any sense, but politically, she wanted to break down the trade union. The trade union didn't serve us as left-wingers, community people, because they were there defending the rights of a white male privileged class, really, not uh, uh, opening it up. So it's an interesting moment of history, but by creating that new channel, it meant that people like myself were able to be recognized as filmmakers and were able to get their kind of trade union card recognizing them as filmmakers, which meant that I could finally set up my own company. I could finally um, work for television, uh, etc. So that was a very, very big transformal kind of moment in uh, the history of uh, filmmaking in the UK. So after that, I basically set up uh, my first collective of uh, filmmakers um, and uh, it happened to be based in England, in Sheffield, at a time which again we allowed, we were able to, to, be, uh, to be able to film uh, all sorts of political movements going on in, uh, in the UK. And from basically being trained or having trained myself uh, as a, a fiction documentary filmmaker, uh, um, a fiction director, I then shifted into documentary because all of a sudden I was so excited by the stories happening in, uh, in the UK at the time. The people I was meeting were far more fascinating than anyone I could invent in my head. So that's how I shifted from being a fiction filmmaker to a documentary filmmaker. And that passion for reality never left me. Uh, as you can see, I'm kind of, you know, very old and I've been making films for a very long time, uh, but I'm still completely passionate, uh, more now than probably ever, uh, in order to tell stories with real people. Now, at the beginning, when I started as a documentary filmmaker, I kept thinking that you had to be um, objective, that you had to uh, tell stories uh, from reality as it, you know, my eyes were seeing and trying to remove myself as much as possible from the process of making the film. I very much moved away from that. These days I make films and I teach films trying to get the filmmaker as responsible as much as possible for the story that he or she is telling. I don't believe in objectivity anymore, but I do believe in truthfulness. I believe in being transparent, 